25 hours to walk here, right? Behind me, that's where we used to build all the ships. And every berth was a ship on, right? And gang along here, all the shops, pitting shop, china shop, all along here, right here, right where we come from, was full. 20, 22,000 blokes over here. Armstrong Whitworth was the preeminent armaments manufacturer in the UK at the beginning of the 20th century, with armament works at Elwick in Newcastle and Openshaw in Manchester, and two shipyards on the Tyne, one at Ellswick and the other at Lower Walker. However, warships, especially capital ships such as battleships and battle cruisers, were steadily increasing in size, and both of these yards were very constrained especially in terms of the length of the berths they had available. The Ellswick works was additionally constrained by being sighted above the bridges at Newcastle, which provided restrictions on both the height and width of vessels that could pass. Additional restrictions imposed by the Royal Navy higher were that any yards building capital ships needed to have at least a depth of 30 feet of water at the outfit and quay, and a Royal Navy ship could not lie alongside a foreign warship while being outfitted, which was a common occurrence at Ellswick. A temporary solution to fitting out nearly completed ships was to take them to a small quay at High Walker, and also to moor vessels in midstream at the River Bend near Bill Quay, which was actually the widest part of the River Tyne. Both of these proved to be very expensive in terms of backwards and forwards traffic between where the ship was berthed and Ellswick. The Armstrong Whitworth board looked at taking over the era Tyne shipbuilders and even considered relocating to another part of the country, but eventually settled on developing a completely new yard at High Walker. So the above photo shows the site of the future Walker Yard on the other side of the river, viewed from Bill Key in about 1905. And this section here is what will become of the Walker Yard. And all of this land was kind of redeveloped um, and removed basically to allow the berths uh, to be built into this hillside to allow the ships to slide down into the River Tyne. The High Walker site was on hilly terrain up to 70 foot above the river in places, however it could all be excavated to the levels required. Just around the corner there had been an old lead works and even closer at a later date a tar works, so the river on this bend was quite polluted. The new yard would end up costing around 1 million but would provide 10 building berths, two of which were capable of building the larger ships, 1000 foot times 120 foot and 900 foot times 110 foot. There was also space for an outfitting key which was capable of berthing three battleships end to end. The first keel was laid on berth number 3 in October 1913 
This was to be the battleship Melia. The opening of the Armstrong Yard at High Walker, but better known as the Walker Naval Yard, took pressure off the Elzik Yard and allowed redevelopment of the slipways so that longer ships could be accommodated there as well. One of the heaviest items to be installed on a battleship were the complete gun turret assemblies, weighing some 100 tonnes or more. So in 1930, Vickers Armstrong invested in a 250-ton hammerhead crane on the fitting out key to cope with all foreseeable lifts. The crane was completed by March 1931 at a cost of £93,000 and was used to fit out the Monarch of Bermuda, which was launched that same month. This crane, which is still in use today, was manufactured by Sir William Arolin Co. Limited in Glasgow. Now if you travel through Glasgow today, you will see a very similar crane in the city skyline. In 1968, the High Walker Yard formed part of the merger deal made between Vickers and Swan Hunter Shipbuilders when a new company, Swan Hunter and Tyne Shipbuilders Limited, came into being. The 18% shareholding that Vickers had in this group was sold at the end of 1969 and with it control of the Walker Yard passed to the Swan Hunter Group. The last ship built at the High Walker Yard was the Dune Din, completed in 1980 and after that the site was used as an outfitting base for the rest of the group. This arrangement came to an end in 1985 with the completion of the Illustris. Most of the cranes at the former Swan Hunter Yard and Wall's End were demolished in 2010 while others were sent to India. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video.
This is this is the main part of the naval yard. I'll just say main yard. And you went to the Neptune yard. And we went to the docks where the, you know, took them in to get painted. And from the docks, that's what I don't know. All the ships on the, on the jetty there, refitted. See the old crane there? Not, that's the oldest crane that we're in. It's black as far as I know. It's, it didn't move, it's built, you know, solid. When I was in the engine room, you know, I'm trying to make these engine rooms walk. <laughs> on the other side, it was cold. Cold, but to get the fair mouth out of the fire, you know. <laughs> Stand there, get warmed up, and back on your horse end. I used to make my tea with the, the wind rod. You know, the old tin cups we used to have, right? We'd put the water in, and we used to heat the wind rod up and stick the, <laughs> stick the wind rod and make a cup of tea. Because <laughs> we couldn't get off the ship, you know. Every, when you're on the horse end of the ship, you had to run all the way down to make you get a cup of tea. I only had ten, 10 minutes for a cup of tea, so we used to do that. <laughs> well, we used to keep in a little paper pack in there, little pack like that. And, um, it wasn't, it was canny like, it wasn't um, like the main has got more than us like. I remember one day, when we were going to yeah, just pull us by the road and the, you know, people stealing a cup of and when we run up this bank, you see all the copper pipes on, <laughs> on, the, on the grass boat. <laughs> so when you got to the gate, they used to sort you in a sort you see you got any copper on you. And that's how we got our beer money. <laughs>